They can own that tiebreaker. And there's the Nidalee band immediately. So Chaser has drawn Nidalee bands ever since Trace and Chaser played the Nidalee Maokai combo against CJ Enters two series ago. Callista's the fast band. Just don't want to have to deal with that if we get towards the tail end of this draft. Rai is actually banned on the blue side, so not a Marin champion. I just want to take it off the table, despite the fact that Trace really been defaulting to the likes of Rumble and Maokai, who so far have made it through the, the bands. What's interesting about that, for me, as we see Rek'Sai taken away from Chaser, is that I see Marin playing Rise in solo queue quite frequently, and he has for a long time, yet SKT has not been a team to prioritize that pick. I mean, to the, to the extent of banning it on blue side, right? If you ban it on the blue side, you're not even considering it as a champion in the rotation. Gragas is banned away, so the Rumble versus Maokai matchup certainly looms large as we expected the target bans to come through. And so far, the only targets set by SKT have been against the jungler. And Bengi, not the big Gragas player, you have to think. Where is Chase? Bengi always makes the weirdest faces in the booth. So, Evelyn first pick. So we don't have the natural Rek'Sai counterplay with the Tremor Sense. Will we see Chaser go to another early presence jungler to try and balance out, or are Jin Air confident enough to pick strong lanes and try and baby Chaser through on the likes of a Sejuani? No. Uh, that was one of the big problems when Cinder Hulk came into play, is that Jin Air played very poorly with Sejuani. Sure. So I think this is a calculated draft from SK Telecom. So where does Chaser go then? Because to match pressure with an Evelyn, there's a very limited pool of junglers that can do that. Yeah, well, we're not going to find out this round. Rumble and Annie, the likely grabs for Jin Air. They haven't been forced out of their comfort zone. You were saying, and I agree, that Che has been powerful on those pick supports. He's going to get one. Trace is just going to play Rumble one more time, his bread and butter this season. And Bang, probably going to take Corky, honestly. Corky, Maokai, very safe, very SK Telecom picks. And Maokai, naturally, over the course of this season, has been edging out Rumble in terms of the 1v1 matchup. We've seen Maokai maintain an average 20 CS advantage in that particular matchup. So I guess we shouldn't be surprised that Rumble versus Maokai is where we go with the top lane. Now we'll wait and see where the draft goes. We've got support and top lane accounted for. What did Janelle want to lock now? As we see GBM flash the Master Yi. Why not? <laughs> well, if anybody was going to be pulling off those kind of shenanigans, you see GBM having a laugh in the booth. It would be GBM. And uh, just as a reminder, over their careers, and this is a very interesting statistic about SK Telecom, these, this Corky and this Maokai, Bang is 20 and one all time on Corky, and Marin is 18 and one all time on Maokai. These are picks that SK Telecom performs with day in, day out, and there is Chaser's Rengar. This, oh my. I am very worried. I really don't like Rengar. <laughs> Look, we've seen Fizz jungle this season. You don't like that. We've seen a lot of things that they're trying to put out early pressure of maybe going too far. Rengar, at least, is prototypically a jungler, but this is a big risk and a big gambit when SKT have already chosen fairly safe lanes. They'd only selected the Corky and Maokai so far, but not eminently gankable lanes for a Rengar. Okay, well, what this says, though, and we could very well see, Lulu is actually a very good mid lane choice uh, for Jin Air in this particular situation because that is going to be going hard into a pick comp, a mid game pick comp. Jin Air has to get those kills and make a huge, huge snowball in the mid game. Uh, it'll depend, I suppose, on which mid laner they pick, but they're pretty committed to this at this stage. Faker would be bold, I think, to pick the victor into this, but Faker doesn't care. Victor is the selection. Faker wants to keep that undefeated streak alive, and it will be a Casio lock. A Casio insta locked by GBM. It did cry out for a Lulu, but it would have been certainly on the lower damage front of team comps. Now goes for the Cassiopeia, opting into this lane matchup that we've kind of seen go either way, but certainly one that the Cassiopeia was winning quite landsidedly when Goon was playing at last series. I'm shocked to report this, but Rengar is actually 2-1 this season in Champions. Uh, it's been KT with the victories on it. Do you remember one of those games that went over an hour and was very high jinxy? Yeah, it was. Um, they didn't win because of the Rengar. I will no. say that. I I know Rengar can create big snowballs, but it's high, high risk. So Jin Air, they want to make this work. 
Uh, I'm actually a bit surprised they didn't take the Lulu because early last season they played a lot of Lulu Rengar, Janair did, and they used it with the speed boost to get picks very effectively. And uh, it's a composition, the Lulu Sivir, that's worked for them before, but instead going to put in a little bit of scaling here. Faker's positioning will be paramount because Jinair has a ton of threat on to Victor. And we wondered where the aggression would come from the jungle. It looked like the Lee Sin was going to be flashed by Chaser. Look, you get more information about Evelyn's positioning when you pop the thrill of the hunt, but Feast of Famine, that's what's coming from the jungle. All right, SK Telecom versus Jinair, game one. Let's go. Number one versus number two here in Champions Korea it will be SK Telecom T1 versus the Jin Air Green Wings. Jin Air picking a risky pick composition. They've got great chase down, they've got great skirmish. But if SKT manages to group in the late game, that could be it for them. The tankiness is rather oppressive from SK Telecom's side, and Faker wants to keep his unbeaten streak on Victor alive. That would be a nice, nice feather in his cap. This yes. game. A lot of weight of numbers on the side of SKT. You're talking about the win rate from Bang. Even just this season, 6-0, it's loomed as a very comfortable pick. Played at three out of his four last games, so has been defaulting his way to the Corky. SKT went on a vision excursion to the blue side of Jin Air, but they were spotted out by a nice defensive ward. So there is information extra for Jin Air. Yeah. I have to imagine they really want to avoid this Sivir Annie lane early. This is a big threat to the Corky. Uh, but it looks like we will get standard lanes after all. Red buff start here from Chaser. All eyes on Chaser. He has to make the he, it, it. It really revolves around his play, I feel, whether Jin Air can su succeed in this game. And Faker, by the way, if he does win this game, he will move to 6-0 and all time on Victor. It's a strange spot where Evelyn is seen as the more reliable late game jungler, but that's kind of how it's evolved in this particular game. <laughs> You're just so single target yeah. focused. Your jungle clear is just not particularly wonderful on the Rengar, so you really need to make it work in the laning phase. His power around brushes in general is unparalleled, but such risk played by Chaser. And, uh, you know, I thought maybe SK Telecom coming into this series would just play Nunu and just try and control Chaser and keep vision on him all the time so he can't make those big ganks on the lanes that he's so well known for. But that is not going to be the case. In essence, they, they do give him a lot more freedom, and especially with a pick like Rengar, some very high pressure early in this one. So he's got the kill pressure in the bottom lane. Speaking of pressure, Bengi was poking his head around bot lanes, walking towards the enemy blue buff. Of course, the jungle follow means that there was a lot more pressure on the top side jungle for Jin Air than on the bot side, but Chase is walking in that direction. Risky buff steal here from Bengi, but he has the Trinket Ward to get the information he needs about Chaser. And Chaser's going to lose his blue buff. Not particularly impactful if you are a Rengar. Worth noting that they had lane pressure in bottom lane at SKT, so definitely risky, but on the lower end of the risk spectrum in that particular regard. I love the risk spectrum. It's my favorite part of League of Legends. Chase is spotted out. You mentioned the blue buff going away. It'll hurt him in terms of experience. Maybe it'll delay the throw of the hunt a little bit. But as you mentioned, the grand scheme of things, not massive. But Bengi also took the crab. So there's actually nothing on that side of the map for Chaser to go for anymore. And the race to level six, as you're saying, will be delayed. Chaser just going to put his trinket ward down and recall having to head back up to the top side. And that's very smart jungling by Bengi too, because he knows that Chaser would l prefer to be haunting the side of the map with the Annie on it, instead of having to go up into the top side with Trace, where there's not that follow-up CC to the same degree. And we're gonna see if this tenuous matchup in top, Rumble versus Maokai, actually, Captain Jack's taking a lot of damage. Chase pretty healthy though, but Jack really DPSed out of this bot lane. Yeah, this is, uh, not sure what the trade that happened there was, but definitely 
in favor of Corky, a little bit unusual considering that Corky generally doesn't do that well against Sivir in the early levels and Annie does present a big crowd control threat. Maybe Wolf actually managed to land a hook. So when we were watching Trace on the Rumble last series that of course he won an MVP for in the 2-0 win against Najin. He's very good at getting denied in general as a top laner. So he's probably not going to draw a lot of jungle pressure. Maybe when Chaser hits six, if there's no other suitable lane. But with, of course, Annie in the bot lane, it's usually a great lane to gain for, as you mentioned. DPS trades in mid. Expecting Rumble just to get denied. You know, four behind CS, the 20 CS mark that we've seen quite commonly. Is Rengar's only true ganking option the bottom lane? Yeah, that that's the question. I mean, maybe if GBM hits a petrifying gaze, but... Faker. Cleanse on Faker. Yeah, Cleanse on Faker. It's going to get rid of one of those CCs immediately, so there has to be more to the follow-up. And GBM not taking Ignite, opting for the very defensive heal. And that's what we expect from GBM as a player, though, is more defensive-style, conservative play out of the mid lane. Uh, we've seen him end many losses with zero deaths. Just kind of the way he rolls. Not to say that he's not effective, because he absolutely is. He just tends to play back pretty far. So let's recap then. Not going to be a lot of lane pressure top just because that's how they like to play with Trace on a champion like Rumble. You already mentioned that GBM more conservative around mid. Doesn't that really tip the hand of Jinair's playstyle when they lock in a Rengar who really needs to get those ganks off? It's either going to be bot lane or it's going to be farm time for Chaser. Yeah, well so far the answer has just been farm time. Chaser farming hard for level 6. And if he's moving down here at this timing, yeah, you can see the pings going down. He wants to gank bottom as suspected. There we go, Jack and a flash in actually. Bengi and Wolf get stunned though. Nice spell shield from Captain Jack. It was actually a bit slow on that particular ability in the previous series. Again, they've won 2-0, so it didn't prove to be a critical factor, but definitely had his wits around him. Gonna be spotted by Ward, they clear it, but Chase's time not optimally used. No, certainly not. And without any camps here, besides the Scuttle Crab, he will be delayed just a bit further, even in farm so far. I'm Boy, am I glad to see not a Cinder Hulk Rengar like Tucson was playing yes. yesterday. That Wow, nice spell shield again. Cinder Hulk Lee Sin's right up there with Cinder Hulk Rengar. Oh, right. and Devourer I Fizz. I would rather see much rather see a Cinder Hulk Lee Sin than a Cinder Hulk Rengar. That is the ultimate crime against jungling, Papa Smithy. How about Devour a Fizz jungle? You got me. <laughs> <laughs> you have your favorites, Monty, that's for sure. Well, jungle sinning is uh, is way up there in terms of, of crime to me, Papa Smithy. High on the list of commandments. <laughs> <laughs> no item sinning in the jungle. No, it's not going to happen this game. It's And the reason why I don't like it is that if you commit to a strategy, then commit to it. As we see Equalizer go down right there, just a little bit of trading from Trace. Nice job, actually. He's getting close to overheating. Mar may have to flash. No, not quite. That was awfully close. Man, what damage a Rumble can do with no damage items, with one full rotation of spells. 100 to 30 percent health on the Malka. <laughs> Not even any. I, he has a Doran shield. That's what I'm saying. No yeah. combat shields whatsoever. Yeah, very nice. So that'll force Marin's TP at the very least. So TP advantage to Jinner right now. They could look for a big scrap. Here's a pink ward. They don't know Chase. They do not know Chaser is there. There we go. He's going to go in. Bola right now. Gravity field down all over. But that's going to be first blood for Bengi. They're turning it around. And here comes the teleport on its way in. Trace using that advantage. No equalizer, though. Bengi going to use the chilling smite. GBM getting low. There is Bang coming up to the bottom lane. Bengi going to live. Faker with a kill. Jack slow and not level six. That will be a huge determining factor. TP used, but one for two. And that is a victory for SK Telecom. Faker coming through. A one for two when they're the ones that expended the summon at Teleport. It was a massive mistake by Chaser. He actually came out with his passive from the brush onto the ward instead of being able to get onto any of the damage threats. Just took free DPS and died for first blood. Big mechanical mistake from Chaser on a champion. We already found it difficult to justify this Rengar. Yeah, you, and that is the thing. You want to pick Rengar in this meta, you have to be picture perfect. That first ult is so 
important to getting a snowball rolling. It's now gone. He has to wait for the thrill of the hunt one more time. And, oh, that is rough. GBM gets a kill, but that's going to be about it. They couldn't equalize onto Bengi. Now the warrior enchant even further delayed. When they increase the flat cooldown on the ultimate, you really want to pick up that, that item or a kill to justify what is now going to be passive farming for a little while. They don't lose any of their blue buffs. That's been a common contest point by SKT. It's power around the enemy blue. But for now, GBM rocking that buff and getting to stack up his tier. Well, this is, this is a bit of a dire situation now. Faker with the lead on one of his best champions at the moment in the mid lane. We've seen what Faker can do even when behind on Victor. If you think back to that CJ game one where it looked like CJ was uh, was definitely on the road to victory, and then Faker just stepped up on Victor, completely turned it around. Probably the most impressive carry performance of the season in a game where, you know, they went on to win quite comfortably, but that game one in particular doesn't stick out in the memory, but it was a wonderful display by Faker. Yeah, definitely. So, Trace on the top side. Went for, went for Merc Treads first, that's a, that's a bit curious. Lost a lot of respect to the CC and damage combos coming through from Evelyn and Maokai. Of course, it'll scale well. Maybe he's just looking for the fast home guard boots for some fighting around the dragon. But it's a lot of money spent on your first pair of boots. I, I do think that that actually is smart. You Going for home guard first when you're so focused on the early and mid game can be wise. They're going to try and gank him, but Chaser's here. So is Annie. SKT does it all. Great equalizer. And can they lock down Marin? Marin is going to go down on a chaser. He picks up the kill by popping his ultimate. Marin actually trades one for one in a 2v3. So Jin Air makes the aggressive move, but once again, this Rengar can't quite close the deal. It's twice punished for making the aggressive move. It's an excellent bait. They've done this twice in a row. Cleared a ward, baited in an engage. They're just using more resources and only trading evenly, which is why you see the gold lead to SKT far more than just the one kill they are in the advantage. Well, not even trading evenly. Last time they sure. actually fell behind a kill on that engage. Uh, with the boots of mobility on Chaser, he has he's zero, two, and two. You cannot be there. So SKT, they have comfort picks. They have picks with huge, huge wins. Marin's Balkai. Bangs Corky, all-time greats on these champions, and now you're behind. Not much more to say about that. Chaser really needs to make something special happen with his third activation, the throw of the hunt. Their smart skirmishes is just they got the instant kill onto Annie, then he re-engaged and effectively handed a kill on a silver platter to Maokai, just because there aren't the base stats there to be scrapping extensively as Rengar. At the same time, you, you do have to be a little greedy if you're Jenner and you want to play this composition. Uh, if you just let Maokai go and you get one kill, is that really enough for Jenner at this point in time? I'm not sure the answer is yes. I'm sure you take a minor win, but you have to snowball crazily right now or else Rengar is just not going to do anything in the late game. I guess worth knowing to me that Che was up top, and despite that, Captain Jack's still almost dead even in CS. They weren't losing much despite rotating Annie. SKT, with all the pressure of the last few skirmishes, picks up the first track. And they had TP advantage. Trace still waiting on his. Faker has nicely chunked out that mid lane. Faker going for Morello Namicon. Faker, of course, likes to get that early Lich Bane for kiting when he can. Instead, chooses to get the second upgrade on his Hex Core. Already got quite a lot of mobility, so the kiting is definitely a factor once you get the 30% movement speed on every gravity transfer queue. Trace working towards an Abyssal Scepter, so not committing to the Home Guard boots just yet. Getting as much laning stats as possible, and of course, the Abyssal Scepter is going to be very relevant, but will they be having two of them given that GBM's already built a Negatron? Well, I certainly. It certainly will. It's uh, it's power transfer, not gravity transfer. That would My be bad. that would be uh, you know, you get to get jump higher when he uses it or something like that. That's fair. And there we go. Fail ult from Chaser. Great, just timing on the back from Marin. Didn't know the Rengar was there, but had a sense. He's like, well, screw this. I'm just gonna go for Gromp instead. Okay, goodbye, mid lane. Fake up. Not getting the solo kills this game, but pushing GBM out of lane, picking up the turret very early at 14 minutes, solo taking down a turret. 
suddenly there's safe, there's less safe places for Cassiopeia to farm, and Cassio is an eminently gankable jungler. Sure, it's not Jarvan gankling the Cassio, but if she ever pushes up down a long lane, intense kill pressure onto me. We talked about this with Jin Air, these weird picks that they have. So you're not feeling the Rengar. I'm not feeling the Rengar. It's just with Jin Air. It seems they lack confidence in themselves sometimes, where they, they feel like they have to have these these counter picks or these surprising strategies. But it's been when they just play meta that I think Jyn'Air has looked their best. They've looked their smartest and and strongest. So why? It, it's almost like intimidation causes them to pick champions like Yasuo or Rengar that don't necessarily have the same strategic flexibility as, as standard meta compositions. and. We're really seeing that here, and you can't really make any bones about it. They may only be 2K behind, and under a lot of circumstances, you say, well, this this game is you're probably pretty likely you can come back for this. Well, it really is not. With this composition, it's very unlikely that Jyn Air is going to be able to engineer a big comeback unless SKT chooses to be caught out in picks around crucial objective timings, and that's really not, not something SKT does. If Chaser and GBM can be some sort of assassin duo onto Faker, because of course you can do some pretty creative engages with the throw of the hunt. Chaser needs to be able to get down the CC, get a decent burst of damage, because he's going to die in whatever kill trade he goes for, but if they trade up, if they're trading Chaser for Faker, maybe there's a team fight they can look to salvage, because if they let this next dragon go down, if they let this game just continue at this pace for another 10 minutes, Rengar's irrelevance will be confirmed. Well, I'm not sure entirely that it hasn't been confirmed already. Bang's entering his power spike, the Trinity Force. And as we speak, 1-0 to Dragons already for SK Telecom. Jyn Air with no early game objectives. They've also lost that mid lane turret. So it's going about as badly as it can. As you mentioned, two Abyssal Scepters already completed suddenly. The power that you get from completing the recipe. Look, there might be some sort of divided fight where both Che and uh, one of the selfish users like Trace or GBM will get the aura, but it's certainly not ideal use of resources when you're already behind in gold. Dark times. Well, SKT still just playing patiently. All they have to do is wait. All they have to do is wait. Speaking of waiting. Chase is not clearing any camps. He's sticking around bottom lane, already a level behind Bengi. Looking for this optimistic pick, but SKT, they just push waves and back away, and there's just no space for Chase to get in. They're going to try again, though. Here we go. Civerold has to be popped. There's the flash tibbers. There is the lockdown. Bang falls. But what can they take off of this? Dragon still a minute and a half away. Only a single minion. They're just going to run at the turret with tibbers. They do not have the damage to take that out. They definitely do not. We can see Nautilus walking towards bottom. Are they going to hard commit to try and take this turret? No, Fake is even going to relieve pressure and walk straight down the river. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's ensuring that he lose no objective despite committing multiple ultimates and two flashes to kill Bang. Yeah, huge cost to that with not really much in return. Sure, they got the kill, but that isn't worth very much right now with their current deficit and the fact that they're not going to be able to take a, a dragon off of it. They're not going to be able to even take a turret. You can see Faker just pushing up mid lane, then coming bot lane and doing the same, ensuring that Jyn Air just has nothing at all. So the big issue is that GBM has no lane pressure whatsoever in mid. Because his turret was taken down so early, he's basically been backing or sitting under his inner turret, allowing Faker free roam to walk around, pick up buffs, respond to aggression. GBM just cannot force any aggression in mid because there's a lot of pick pressure. There's Marin who can come in with a targeted CC. Cassiopeia is a lane dominating champion, but when the laning phase has effectively ended so early when she's lost her turret, she's kind of stuck in this position where she needs to push if she's going to farm, and then she just lacks any control. Yeah, and she, she just can't push right now, uh, especially with all the lack of wards in their own jungle. You can see SK Telecom just lighting up that bottom side of Jyn Air. Another turret. And look at the lane assignments from SKT as well. Faker goes bottom. Then we just see Kibang respawn, push the mid lane. They have total control. World's easiest dragon. 
with the amount of vision they have, there's literally no risk of even a flank, given they have three pink wards committed to defensively around their red side jungle. SKT, picture perfect League of Legends. Yeah, the warding too, look at how deep they are. These very deep wards in the bottom side ensure that there's like zero chance of a surprise Rengar because they will see him before he ults. A lot Even of respect. without the pink ward. Yeah, this is very respectful warding. Usually you'd see some of the wards in a little bit further, a little bit tighter to the dragon, but not in this case. It's unique champions who have those really rapid gang paths, the likes of Rengar, Rammus back when he was in the meta, you would go for those deeper wards. So still respecting Chaser, even though he's effectively an ult stun bot with his E and then will die inevitably in any sort of AoE trade. Captain Jack in the unenviable position of sitting and farming next to his tier two while Faker starts to move in on the enemy jungle. He feels very safe as well he should. Lichbane? He probably should go Lichbane here because of the speed and engage. He, he has to have that speed to kite. And nope. Going to be actually a needlessly large rod, so straight AP. Bit bold, bit bold. It's surprising given how the game's evolved, especially given his lane assignment has been the bottom lane and they've set up so many defensive vision. Lichbane really jumped out as the obvious itemization, but again, more burst focus, more instant wave clear focus as SKT rotate with Bang on this Trinity Force power spike. And what's Trace to do? Well, there, there are, in terms of his itemization, ooh, Chaser gonna come in, gets Wolf with the root, and there's the Timbers follow up. Can they get the kill? Nice root onto Bengi as well. Really good play from Jin Air. They want to go bold. They're all grouped together, but they can only get one kill at the end of the day. And here comes Faker. More turret pressure with this Victor. And how many times have we seen Faker playing aggressively, just autoing turrets in the mid game on this Victor? He's so confident in his abilities in a 1v1 that he plays quite boldly. GBM wants to get an angle. He's going to lose the tower, though, has to dodge the death ray. Faker, Gravity Field, goes in with the Chaos Storm. Trace is there too. Faker still playing in this lane, not afraid. Wow. He has so much information about what's below him on the blue side jungle and enough information about the top side that this is what opens up Faker to play this game. It's almost like he's playing basketball with his own ball, just doing whatever he wants, and there's nothing GBM or Jin Air can do to stop him. Well. Their 4K gold down with the Rengar now. The, the hopes of winning this game have long since dwindled in the distance, barring some sort of massive disaster and meltdown from SK Telecom. And when they're playing this tight, doesn't seem that you can really bank on that one. So when you have an aggressive playstyle like Fegu, always had that aggressive streak ever since his first series, and the excellent warding of his team, 70 CS advantage odd in the mid lane, taking solo, taking both the outer and the inner turrets. And now he's just going off on his merry split push way. Split push Victor, it's a new one. Well, that's how Faker plays it, honestly. That's how we've seen him play it. He's not just content with dominating his lane and playing very far forward. He constantly push, puts that tower pressure down. We've seen him 1v3 people and still auto attack turrets and everyone is so afraid of Faker's Victor that they can't get him off objectives. He plays this champion different than anyone else I have seen play it. Especially given that, you know, the innate kit doesn't really necessarily lend itself towards split pushing. <laughs> good duelist, good at zoning under turrets, for example, putting down the gravity field and then having your Trinity Force Corky auto attack. But when it comes to split push, isn't the most escapable champion. It's the reason that people opt into assassins against Victor. But when you have your team playing around, when you have that aggression, the results, they're impressive to see. Yeah, and it's not only that he, yes, he is vulnerable to those all-ins, but Faker in these all-ins frequently just outplays people. So he'll always, it seems, trade evenly with the Victor, if not kill two people for the one. So it doesn't really matter if he dies. There is a death cap. Oh my, Faker's items right now, double upgrades on the hex core, Marilla Namakon and death cap under 24 minutes into this game. He, it's 23 minutes and he has 276 CS. What? So I'm just wondering, which of these particular metrics do you want to focus on? It's 24 <laughs> minutes and he's got 280 CS. He's got about 500 AP. He's got more than 20 AP 
uh, per minute. He's uh, all of the particular metrics. He is just blowing away. I, I mean that that's lo that level of CS in the current meta. When we used to see a lot more mid laners in season two farming the jungle, farming the rates over and over, you could hit numbers like that much easier. Hitting it now, that that's unbelievable. The unique thing about Victor, one of the reasons why he's suited to this split push role, the Lion Wave Clear means that he walks up to a minion wave and before it even meets another one, instant clears it. And of course, when you're averaging 20 AP a minute, very easy to instant <laughs> clear those waves. But all these things add together to why his playstyle evolves this way, is that he understands so well his damage output, his split push potential, where the wards are around the, the map and where he can defensively move to if he is ganked. Once again, throw the Hunt used onto a very tanky Marin. Yeah, Marin, is he actually going to die here? There's the second route. There we see the Tibbers, and looks like Marin will die to the gank. But every time they do that, they give up something else. This time, it's going to be a dragon. In the end, it will be kill and a turret for a dragon. It's about all Jin Air can do right now, you have to say. But that's third dragon of the game already for SK Telecom. That is a very good trade as they power into the late game. Yeah, the gold still stays very competitive, but the objectives really start to win. That's actually the ultimate used on to Trace, but he can get away. Yeah, does flash though. Does flash for it. They want GBM Bengi around the side. There's the ultimate Agony's Embrace, forces the flash. Tried to be cute, tried to bait out the ultimate, but GBM wasn't having any of it. More CS for Faker. Thank you, Che. 350 gold with the tippers. Svaker comes up. Calls Wolf off of the ward. He needs to add that to his list of gold. Doesn't pick up the pink ward, though, but much easier for him to farm out another cool 150 gold or so. Well, what is the next item going to be? That pure AP giving him that huge, huge amount of burst. And for once, not going for that early Lich Bane like we talked about. This has been kind of his bread and butter build on the Victor recently. Keeping the AP high, of course, keeps that line minion wave that we just saw on your screen instantaneous. So walking around, hoovering up minion waves, hoping to finally break this top out of turret. Wow. Such fast pushing. Level 16 to the level 14 of GBM and everyone else. Chase level 11. There's a five level difference between mid lane and enemy support. And hey, look at this. SKT just gives Faker the, the isolation gold on the top lane turret. Had like one, one hit left on that objective, and he gets that too. When we last checked in, and this was about five, six minutes ago, Faker was 2,200 gold up on GBM. I, I shudder to think what it is now. SKT, you mentioned it in the pregame. We've mentioned it for years now. Faker focused, this was always the way. Even in metas that maybe favored AD carry focus, they were still a mid-focused team. This game seems like that to the nth degree, calling off allies to pick up Selfish Farm, going for this build so he can split push. It's all on Faker, but man, already, as you mentioned, 2,700 gold ahead of GBM. Yeah, and when we talk about the way teams play it, here we go, Trace okay. comes in with the equalizer. There is the pick again. Janair makes it work, but can they follow up? Gravity Field just going to stun the bear, but... Where, where's the follow-up here? There's no dragon to be taken. There's nothing. Faker just going to walk into the mid lane, see if there are any wolves, and then keep on pushing. Now, can they stop this siege? This is a great power spike for SK Telecom. It's like they're not going to they're not going to go for it. They just want the pressure, and then they can walk back and move through the enemy jungle. So, uh, Janair, they've gotten the last few picks. They have done well to continue to boost their kill score. They are ahead in kills, but is it enough? It's not. <laughs> yeah, it's, again, it's one of those things where you can get the picks, but pick into objective is where League of Legends went back in Season 3. It's one of the reasons that World Elite as a team fell away is that OMG understood the pick objective playstyle. And to the nth degree, once again, SKT, they're giving up picks, but they're not giving up any significant objectives. One turret down, no dragons. It's not going to be a complete shutout in terms of objectives, but... SKT's trading up, even though they're losing in terms of kill trades. Yeah, and here we go. TP coming in for Marin. There's the zip on the home guard. GBM actually just going to use a flash to try and get away. Great disengage from the Bola. But here we go. Nope. Not going to be able to pursue. So, nice attempt there by Marin. Trace TPing into the fight 
Big has avoid stuff. Uh, yes, he does. Captain Jack Martin going in once again. He's so tanky already. Equalizer going to come down at the choke, and Bengi has to flee. There is a gravity field to prevent the re-engage, so SK Telecom getting a bit too big for their bridges. Chaser wants the re-engage. They have the Tibbers, but fast disengage from SK Telecom. They're going to lurk in the Baron pit after clearing out the ward. Jin Air doesn't have the Rengar ultimate to engage this any longer, just the Annie. And crucially, don't have the Equalizer to force bad trades for SKT, whether they're clearing vision or attempting to take the Baron. So drawing out that ultimate is actually very significant for SKT, especially with Faker having all his skills and summoners available. Yeah, he's just got everything, every tool to use. Uh, Janair starting to get very nervous about this Baron. They know they need to push forward as a unit. Faker's actually not in the bush. Oh, Trace, there we go. There's the Nautilus ultimate death charge. That's going to be Trace knocked up, hooked, and dead. Bang with the kill. And this is definitely Baron time for SKT. They've been averaging, what, a 24, 25 minute Baron. Definitely been picking that objective a lot faster than their contemporaries. They have good control around the area, but they're not satisfied with just one pick, even though Trace, when he respawns, doesn't have teleport available. And they're all going to pile back into the Baron Pit. Still a few wards, but no wards directly on the objective. SKT just going to go for it. Chaser here. 8,000 health, so still quite healthy. Chaser has ult. Uh, they have to be careful about this. He's actually just going to use his ult right now. Is he going to jump into the pit? He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. He's going to jump in, and he's going to die very quickly. Faker actually gets the kill and the Baron in one go. Bengi slowing GPM up right now. Che on the retreat. Lots of poke coming in from Quirky Rockets. He'll actually use to get in range of this Annie. Annie just getting poked to death by Rockets. And uh, that equalizer does nothing to save the Jyn Air support's life. And that'll be SKT with the Baron equalizing on kills and in this game. And you thought the split push from Faker was scary before. Now he has the Baron buff minions to help him out and just gonna occupy Trace's time as they pick up their unanswered fourth dragon. SK Telecom, man. <laughs> <laughs> they seem pretty good at League of Legends, Monte Cristo. You might, you might say that, you might say that. And in the next game, I really hope we see Janair just go back to what's worked for them. And I think they were a bit bamboozled by all the jungle bands and the jungle pick first on Evelyn, but it, it's really worked for SKT. If Janair's on the blue side, they may be able to orchestrate something similar to what shut down their jungle picks in this game. I mean, my worry is though, Monte Cristo, that you know, we talked about the fact that Jinnah had an excellent plan A, their plan B was okay, but we were worried that their you know, playbook was only a couple of pages thick. This game, there was definitely some targeted bans and takeaways towards Chaser, but there's basically comfort left for everyone else, and still, SKT have steamrolled Jinnah. Yeah, played very well around the early game, but again, SKT also getting these comfort picks, Victor. Corky, Maokai, I mean, SKT doesn't have to do anything that is outside of their comfort zone either. So Marin gonna go in with the Righteous Glory just for zoning, and that'll be a quick turret and inhibitor. Jack just gets jumped on, and okay, oh. Flash Chaos Storm, Faker with the kill. 810 AP at 32 minutes. Uh, well, that's what happens when Faker gets the lion's share of the farm. They're definitely putting the power onto their most powerful player. Uh, Equalizer gonna try and, and to stall out this game, but it is not enough. Baker chases Trace around to the side, gets the power transfer, and now they focus down the Nexus. 33 minutes, easy, easy win for SK Telecom. T1, Faker ends the game, 371 CS at 33 minutes. Impressive. Look over to the gold, that was 14,729 gold farmed in 33 minutes, and that wasn't with some sort of crazy kill score. He was only 3-0-1. He was 4,000 gold above GBM, and it's not like GBM had an abnormally low amount of gold in that mid lane either. Just uh, really, that's what happens. We talk about teams, and we say, teams prioritize players. Faker was given all of the empty lane farm, tons of jungle camps, and when you get that many resources, you have to deliver. Well, he did. And he's delivered so consistently, Monte Cristo. 
This game, it felt like the game kind of played around Faker. He split pushed, he got every resource, he was handed over all the gold and carried very straightforward. Be competitive background. Now on the blue side, Jinnah, it felt like barring Chaser, they got everything they wanted to opt into in game one and lost so comprehensively. So how can they engineer a draft that deals with SKT better than the one in game one? So far, SKT happy to go with the same bands as Nidalee, banned away instantly. Chaser, 2-0 on that champion in that series against CJ Enters. Hasn't seen Nidalee since. So, speaking of bands that were in the draft last time, there is the victor. I think you have to take that away. Now, the Callista comes through. Last ban, will it be the Rise? Of course, SKT banning Rise on the blue side, not wanting to first pick it. You just know, if they get Trace onto Rise, they're gonna go with the Rumble, I think, for Marin and try and play around the Rise as much as possible. That was how we saw success found two days ago as Najin were happy to let KT pick up the rise and then just played around it, rotated around it, and never reached that late game power spike where rise was relevant. Alistair's the last ban on the blue side. The big question, will SKT ban the rise or leave it up? Yeah, the rise, but also remember Rek'Sai. They didn't want Chaser to be on probably his best champion in the last game. They could go that route again and force the Rise or the Gragas, of course. Again, Marin has played the Rise time and time again, and I think the Rek'Sai, the smarter choice. You want to take out Chaser's best champion, and now the Rise is yours if you want it. It's not like Gragas falls a long way behind. Chaser hasn't got his hand on Gragas very often. 2-0, 11.7 KDA. It's going to give up the Rise if Marin wants it, and that's a big if. We're not sure if they're going to prioritize this champion, even though we're still on patch 5.11, and he's still really powerful and super strong of course uh, they would have to play especially Bengi more around Marin to keep him safe and maybe pick up some early kills in this next game uh, of course Bengi's just gonna be comfortable on Nunu or on Evelyn or whatever he really wants right now they have the last pick I I'm really hoping to see some faker echo I gotta say Papa Smithy that's what I want to see I was waiting when I saw echoes Kip when Riot first announced him I said this is a champion that I need to see Faker play, and I want to see him play it so badly before the 512 nerfs. The other Zed and Assassin Masters like Dale have got their hands on the champion. Rookie has obviously done wonderful things yeah. over in the LPL on the Echo, but I think we're all waiting with bated breath to see if Faker finally pull it out. Red side last pick, one of the best spots for it. Yeah, absolutely. So expected picks from SK Telecom. And now Jin Air, they, they could take the Sivir. Absolutely, they can Sivir take Sivir Rumble here. That would set them up nicely in terms of power picks in this meta. A lot of skirmishing ability. And almost certainly those will be the selections. Trace is just Rumble only this season. Mm -hmm. Remember, oh, bang. He actually has been playing a lot of Tristana. He's number one and number two in Korean solo queue at the moment. And Trist is within one of those big picks. And SK Telecom, with the way they play the map, those fast pushes from Tristana could be highly useful. Strange to combat a fast push AD carry and complement it with a slow scaler in Rise. Can they play around, you know, turrets falling and rotating the Rise to safe places to farm? Not sure if they have innate synergy between the two, but I think Tristana's underrated in this meta. She's basically the super Jinx at this present point after Jinx was really toned down in the early game. Fake is thinking about a new mid pick, but probably not going to be the Soraka mid, but we would have said the same thing about Yi. Or support. Who knows? No, Janna, the very safe pick to amp up Tristana's damage, provide that peel for the back line. They, they still don't have the greatest engage, reliant on Bengi's flanks so far, and that'll be maybe Kennen's support, probably. Probably going to be the Kennen support. That's something that Wolf and Bang really innovated with Callista, and they're going to try it again. Harass lane for sure. You ever get stunned, and of course, access to CC at what, level 2, if you get the right rotation of spells off on Kennen, with just the auto attack trade damage from Justana. There's surprising 2v2 kill pressure if it is going to be the Kennen Justana. Of course, we're not completely discounting the possibility of Kennen mid. Yeah, blind picking the Kennen mid, though. I mean, who knows anymore what Faker's going to pick. <laughs> I, I, I honestly can't say uh, with any certainty, and I doubt anybody in the world can. So what will Chase select? A lot of times you do see Morgana to deal with Kennen stacking stuns. 
Uh, just shut that down. Could pick something very tanky like Leona. We haven't seen Leona in a while. I got to say, this SKT lineup, not the worst lineup to play Master Yi with. Uh, absolutely true. Actually, a very good lineup to play Master Yi mm. with. You get to those double resets with Yi and Tristana. Azir and Nautilus, the final picks. Much more meta composition for Jyn Air this game. So returning to the Azir, already a win on this champion, already mentioned. 4-0 in competitive play. Cassio, Azir, LeBlanc, Lissandra. Where do they want to go with a mid lane pick? In fact, it's going Rise to be mid. mid lane Rise. He has this in his uh, match history. Has been trying it out in the mid lane. Not sure if it's quite as powerful as in top, but going to opt into it anyway. And he's going to go Ghost Flash also. So high mobility in team fights. Of course, the way you used to play Rise very frequently in mid before the Rise rework. And I'm curious how Faker's going to do on this champion, especially against Azir, who has that large amount of poke in the early game. Faker going to have to play a bit more passively here. Marin uh, once more onto the Maokai. He's now 19 and one in his career on that pickup. Eminently gankable lane rise in terms of both ganking him with his low base stats and ganking for him with his instant cast CC. That's one thing that wasn't changed in the big rise rework. Eve does good early damage. Kuzan does opt into the barrier though, so has the defensive option. It's quite maneuverable on Azir. How do you get around the fact that this is just a weaker laning matchup for Faker than we usually see when it comes to his picks? Uh, true, but that said, SK Telecom, they can afford to have the weaker laning phase when their late game power is extraordinary. Bang can play the janitor. When we see SK Telecom play Tristana in the past, they use Bang just as cleanup. I've seen Bang get pentakills on Tristana, but it's all just reset, reset, reset after the AoE comes through. Well, can they do it again, guys? We are going into game two, Jyn Air versus SKT. This is the last, potentially I should say, last game of the first round Robin this season. And we're going to take a look at our Korean casters right there. Of course, Caster Jun, Kim Dong Jun, and Cloud Templar. And now Jin Air. They have, the, they have a chance to take this to three games, certainly. They have a very good composition to do so. But should they lose? It will mean that SK Telecom has 2 owed every other team in the top six. And that is a level of dominance in this league that is frankly shocking. Only dropping a single game to Samsung and Anarchist. We see some damage trading. There's actually multiple members from SKT. Uh -oh. Remember, Faker Rune can prison. still Rune Prison at any time. Uses the Rune Prison. Chaser opens up a lot of distance. They can commit double flash here. Does Bengi have the damage? The Q's come through, one more Q auto will do it. The auto attack comes through, and SKT get first blood. And that's the guy you want to shut down on Jin Air. Bengi with the first blood advantage now. He can chase around Chaser in his own jungle if he wants to with the extra gold. He's just going to go straight for the long sword. Chaser caught out early on the invade, and Faker doesn't even have to blow a summoner to get the rune prison. He does have to start W, but that's not going to be the worst thing in the universe. Certainly not. The way this draft changed with the last pick, Maokai warps things. So we were talking about the fact that fast push with rise top didn't really seem like it makes sense. If they go for the fast push and it ends up isolating mid, whether that was from a lane swap that obviously hasn't happened, or just trying to push down turrets quickly, if that just isolates Faker to farm, things are going to be great for SKT. Yeah. <laughs> Kuzan just walked up right there. The W, not too much effect that's having. And I'm a bit surprised to see Wolf back on the support Kennen. Now, it's something that SKT did innovate, and we saw the Kennen uh, Callisto lanes in a bunch of other regions after they got it. Bengi looking for a level two gank. He knows he has the damage right now. Faker still with two summoners. He's just going to go. Kuzan burning, burning, burning. Lower, lower, lower. Faker probably could have gotten that if he had flashed. Yeah, the flash trade was obviously what Kuzan was looking to opt into, but so risky when the burst damage and almost 100% chance of hitting the following Q in an auto attack. 
Yeah. Still, that risk pays off. Doesn't have to use a summoner. And walks back to lane. Yeah. And he does have the cleanse, too. So he probably could have gotten out of that. It's true. Um, but, yeah, that's that's a nice little free farm there for Faker. Bengi now going for his blue buff after a jaunt through the mid lane. So much lane presence coming through from Ken and Tristana. Both these targets free auto someone and hit their spells. We're talking about stuns, talking about massive burst damage coming through from the explosive shot. Really have to be on your toes against Cannon's support because he just has so much more ranged auto attack presence compared to a lot. Chase going to take a nice burst of damage after opting into it with the dredge line. Yeah, and th that's the scary thing, like you're saying. If that stun goes down, it really just loads up the damage on the explosive shot. I'm really liking the concept behind this lane. Very powerful, for sure. Ah, eh, man. Kuzan already on his back foot. Faker just wanting to get some wards down. Going for a nice walk. A little stroll. Stroll in the river. He found on plenty of those in the previous <laughs> game. What's he doing? He's going to cue this. Are they actually going to dive this? He's going to get seen. Uh, of course, Rumble vulnerable, and the wave is there, but the ward also detecting Faker. A really good ward coming through. Very nice defensive ward. Chase is going to be called over. Fake is going to be back. Back, and he probably has gold for that tier. Yeah. No, it doesn't even have gold for the tier. That's awkward for Faker. Yeah, definitely not the best back timing. He's going to lose a few minions on the turret. As a result of that move, they wanted to shut down Trace, but Jin Air with the smart ward there, thinking that they might dive Trace quickly in this game. and. Uh, that's actually a very weird ward for Jin Air to have, especially against Evelyn, because it's not even on any of their camps. So that basically says that they think that either Wolf or Faker was going to be in the jungle for that dive. Definitely not something you would expect uh, if you're going to make that roam right now as Rise. Yeah, if you, with Wolf in full display, expecting a Rise to have lane control on an Azir with his lack of any sort of ranged wave push, especially until level four when he opts into putting into point into his E. Curious, but look, if there's one thing we can say about Trace, this guy is an excellent defensive laner. He very rarely dies during the laning phase. And once again, whether it's a smart adaptation or an on the fly call, we don't know, but it worked out really well. Yeah, I'm, I'm just very surprised that that would be the choice made for a ward, but it definitely was smart and it definitely worked. It's not something that we see too terribly often. Still going to be the W Max in the mid lane, so still looking for. Perma root effectively with the W. Falling a little bit behind in CS, but to be expected in this matchup. Bengi loading up on wards as he hits that recall, and no real opportunities yet outside of that awkward level one. And Jin Air catching back up in terms of gold. Thanks a lot to the mid lane CS from Kuzan. And Chaser losing his flash, man. He didn't even opt into walking around lanes. He's built up a lot of experience. Level five already, actually out leveling Bengi despite the first blood. Sully doesn't have the items to compare, but he's used his time to farm, farm, farm. Yeah, there we go. Chaser on the bottom side pops the Raptor buff to clear the ward as Bang and Wolf quite low. And having to be the first dual lane to recall. Trace gets caught out, though. Mar in here. There's an equalizer down. Trace trying to turn it around. He's backing up. He's overheated. He is going to kill Bengi. Can he get Mar in too? He's in the minion Ooh. line. No. The passive proc from Marin keeps him alive, but that's going to mean Jin Air gets a kill for a kill and a dragon, and there's nothing SKT can do. A really nice pathing from the jungler. Also, they had had that wave pushed in. We noted the fact that Bang and Wolf were low on bottom. That's actually a big win in terms of a trade. One for one when there was two members, including the jungler used, and a free dragon for Jin Air. And, yeah, I mean, sure, Marin got the kill there, so they equalized in terms of that gold. He's going to lose some CS. Trace doesn't have a teleport, so he's going to slowly make his way back into the top side, but definitely a nice pickup for Jin Air, looking more solid here in the early game. Faker has his tier now. Turning to lane, going to be going tier catalyst as expected. Rise, of course, with that big two to three item power spike once he gets the stacks up. Tier was delayed. I uh, would have much preferred to have it around the four and a half, five minute mark, but it's more of a seven minute tier, so that stacking just will be 
A little bit delayed. Of course, delay is the Saracen embrace and all this scaling a couple of minutes. Will that be a big factor? I guess if the second dragon goes down for Jin Air, maybe we'll be talking about yes, but still around 25 to 30 minutes, Rise will be pretty super powered. Yes, yes, he will. SKT, though, Rise, not the best engager. Fortunate that he doesn't have to have TP, so he can take Ghost here to help out SK Telecom's engage. That's a major factor. But Bengi has to hit those flanks so that Wolf can follow up with a flash slicing Maelstrom, and then the chase will be very good. Bengi's here again, has Agony's Embrace spotted by a nice pink ward. Trace often pink wards these lane brushes, even if he's not against an Evelyn, just for excuse, exclusive knowledge. Has the Equalizer up again, just came up as Bengi was moving between the second and third Ooh, brush. Oh, this could be good. He doesn't know, Bengi doesn't know the chaser's there. He sees another pink ward. There's an equal, uh, there's a explosive cast. Bengi's knocked into the wall. There's not enough follow-up damage, though. Two ults used, but you can see how heavily Jin Air is trying to play around this Maokai and this rumble in the top lane. Marin a little bit overextended. Marin has flash. He's going to have to use it, yes. Ends up being a flash for flash trade as Chaser uses flash to try and get the angle on Evelyn. Free farm wars in the mid lane. Even though it's a slight CS advantage for Kuzan, you're still going to take that if you rise. Yeah, Bang now having a bit of trouble here in bottom with Wolf. Captain Jack has accrued quite a CS advantage. Uh, it will be, it'll, it'll be turned around just a tad by this large wave that breaks on the tier one turret, but look at the chip damage that Jin Air is getting already. Chipping out bottom, chipping out mid very effectively. And when the ganks have come in topside, they haven't worked. The pink wards are there, and they're being defended really well by Jin Air. And without any extra lane pressure, Bang and Wolf have never had the free time with the enemy turret that they're looking for, of course. Throw down that explosive shot, rapid fire on your exploding turrets with Cannon's ranged auto attack. But defensively, Cannon pre-level six doesn't really offer very much for his carriers. Jin Air have rotated so many members around Marin. And Marin, a bit toast right now, pops the ultimate, Trace comes up to the turret, no equalizer available, remember, Kuzan going to use the ultimate right there, but actually has to flash back out. Awkward, and Faker now ghosting, ghosting up in top, he's stacked up, he's stacked up. Chaser gonna be the first target, there's just rune prison spam, and there is death for Chaser as SK Telecom turns around the gank not enough in terms of ultimates in top lane to commit to that. Kuzan's, I'm not sure what happened with Kuzan's ultimate right there because it didn't push Marin away. We'll have to see a replay. You can, of course, twist it advance through such advance. So maybe that was just a skillful play. Trace layers down the equalizer, looking for the turret dive onto him. Baker actually just following through. Flash, there's a rune prison, there is a dead Trace. He keeps on going, he keeps on going. There's Q, Q, Q. And the W, double kill for Faker. Already with a beautiful dive, Bang has to flash out of a hook, but that is not going to be a favorable trade for Jin Air. And we talked about Kuzan, he likes to roam, he likes to make these plays, but there simply wasn't enough damage to take down Maokai. And while top lane rise is eminently kiteable with the Ghost, he was just able to hit those extra spell rotations, get that last rune prison in, and make a massive play. Now Trace is teleported in, Smart. he knows Bengi's in the area. Can Bengi get away? Bengi on a secret mission, trying to escape, they find him. He is dead to rights here. Maybe he can suicide into a turret. They want to give this kill to Trace, and there is the chilling smite, but they're, oh. He hasn't actually taken any damage at all. This is very awkward. No, he, he got hit by a chilling smite. That's true. But he still soup. I thought he did. No, he chilling smite of the Gragas. Ah, Didn't ah. take any damage at all, and hence the awkward nature uh, of his death. That was a teleport burn for that. Definitely not an optimal use of that summoner spell. Well, this is awkward. Faker is 3-0-1-1, his same score as last game in total, except he's rise and it's 12 minutes into this game. Kuzan just going to bring him back around. Chaser's here. Can they kill Faker? Wolf also. He's gonna have to back off of that one. Will he get hooked? Yes, he will. Actually, Jin Air going to turn this into a couple. Kuzan with the pickup. Hard to say why Wolf is there. Didn't even have Slicing Maelstrom available. Had already used it previously. Still level six, though. Kuzan with the Azir Sec play gets that kill onto Faker. At least something cause of optimism in the mid lane. And they get the turret. So Faker goes down, gives up a lot of gold with that shutdown. Crucially, Monte Cristo taking down GBM's turret at what, 14 minutes into game one? GBM was a non-factor 
and Faker played smartly around that. Kuzan this time takes down Faker's turret early. Rise not known for his counter pushing, so they can try and exert control. They certainly got the wave control on bottom as they're even just choosing to leave this turret up and force Bang to continue what has been a horror laning phase for him. Well, they want to just build up a wave to push through right now so that they can get the dragon right as it spawns. Kuzan had time to shop. Bengi wants to get a flank. They have pings going down. They see Bengi with the pink ward. Vision over dragon complete for Jin Air. So they're trying to fight their way back into this game. They find themselves with a gold lead after the turret kill, but they don't have necessarily the presence on the dragon, and they don't have TP. Oh, dragon's already down to 2,000. How it's going to be very difficult for Jin to contest. This nice poke damage from Kuzan. They're going to engage. Eve does pick up the dragon. Ultimate use, and here comes Kuzan. And Chaser also isolating Wolf. Jack with the Sivir ultimate. There is a great explosive casket equalizer. Bang's going to fall. A triple kill for Kuzan. And that is a powered up Azir. Now for Jin Air, how can they fast push this? Trace still on the HUD, going to actually flash. There's the. Uh, he's going to back off as he overheats. And you see the teleport come in from Marin. Who's on? Keeping him at the bay. Chaser there as well. Marin in a world of hurt between three Jin Air members as he tries to save Faker. Faker can't make the play. Unnecessary sacrifice. And now Jin Air doing well. A really poor teleport coming through from Marin. Should have canceled it. Faker should have called him away. Didn't have mana. He was at half health as that engage was happening. Four kills for a dragon. Jin Air, well, they'll definitely take that. Yeah, but it has to be said, SKT, lots of power in the late game. Uh, they still can come back in this. The 2.5K gold differential is not something that can't be overcome with their composition, but they have to play a little bit safer. They've given up a lot of unnecessary kills after responding very well to the dive in the top side. Teleporting back in, uh, sh just Faker overextending, Wolf not being able to turn it around, and Kuzan has been the major beneficiary of all of that, moving to 4-1-2 and two on this Azir. It's heartening to see Jin Air still playing good League of Legends, crucially in game two, because Monte Cristo, we've seen a lot of even game ones against these top teams, like CJ, like KT, maybe at least for portions of game one, but game twos, they've been master Yi time, they've been the stumps that we've been seeing. Jin Air, they're actually comfortably ahead at 15 minutes, 3K gold lead almost, 2,500 gold lead and playing smartly around their power. We've seen multiple times down bottom, Sivir and Ch Captain Jack and Che have just had the lane pushed in, and playing around that has bought some advantages for Jeanette. And Tristana, uh, in terms of advantages on the other side for SKT, where is the fast push? Maybe it's gonna come in now. Maybe they can trade tier one for tier one. They will be able to look at that damage. Just haven't had the free time. This lane has been torn apart by the Siva Nautilus duo, and these are the two champions that uh, Jinnah have been playing so regularly. These are the sort of champions we thought would be targeted by bans by STKT. But left open, you can see the power of Captain Jack and Che, and it's crucial that when this duo came into the lineup, that's when fortune started to change for Jinnah. Uh, that's annoying. Marin gonna go in. Wolf there with the follow-up. Faker starting to move up into the top side. Jinnah wants to back off. They will do so with a flash and an on the hunt. Uh, Trace actually canceled his TP. Okay. So draw out that TP summoner. He'll have to walk over for the next dragon because he will not have the summoner available. So Jin Air right now, mm -hmm. they've got to do the fast push. There's very little wave clear on SK Telecom. Uh, Faker going to have to get pretty close and pop his ultimate if he wants to do that. Of course, Maokai. Not going to offer much, and Tristana does need some time and some auto attacks to clear waves with the explosive shot. So when you have this Azir and the Sivir, and you could just clear beating waves faster, it's time to set up on these Tier 2s. It's time to get the Azir passive turret behind you and really, really commit to pressure and try and snowball off of the towers when you already have a gold lead. Having the outer ring of turrets down does require some minion waves to be prepped to try and cause some global minion pressure, so that's what we're probably going to be seeing from Captain Jack in the bottom lane. Faker's rotated himself to pick up the farm, because of course he did. We saw the previous game. <laughs> it's what he loves to do. But yeah, if they can prep some minion waves, they have very good turret damage. They don't necessarily have a lot of range, though. Kuzan, excellent for the disengage, though. Let's see if they can try and set up one of these scenarios where they can get safe turret damage. Uh, here we go. Uh, 
I like clockwork coming in. They want to get it. Bang, Whoa. actually, big poke. You can't say Kuzan doesn't have a lot of items. So they're going to try and get Trace at the top side. He will just die. And that is a major problem because now that siege is going to be stymied to a certain degree because it is a 4v5. They have a small window when this minion wave comes in, a 4v2 with low wave. Can Kuzan zone them away? They're going to get at least chip damage onto this turret. Of course, remember, they do have the sun turret behind them, but not a significant amount of turret damage put down. No, and that ultimate from Faker very quickly clearing out the mid wave. So Trace's depth there actually costing them a little bit because they couldn't simultaneously advance the wave in the top side while applying the mid pressure with four members. So that's a big time window that has been avoided by SKT. It's going to take a while before uh, Kuzan has the passive to make that move again. It's been a long time since I've seen a team have such vision control over SKT. Look at Jinair's wave wards around the blue side area, around Dragon. They have excellent ward coverage. Some of them starting to be cleared, some answering wards coming through from SKT. But Jinnah have set up excellently for the Dragon, which spawns in 40 seconds time. Can they make it work though? Chaser is on the top side, so not an ideal position, but they're anticipating this gank already. Bengi's there, Marin's there, can they turn around? Here comes Bengi, they know he's coming in, chilling spike down onto Trace, Equalizer drops immediately. Marin in a bit of trouble, Marin also has a lot of MR right now, there's the overheat, they want this damage, explosive cast for the disengage, Chaser on the ropes, turns the heat onto Bengi, there he goes, the Wolf joins the fray, Trace goes down, Chaser's gonna go down, but does that mean that the Dragon goes to Jinair? And there's a double kill for Marin as he just gets tankier and tankier and tankier. Rise chasing down Sivir in the bottom lane, already forced out the ultimate. In fact, Ghost used as well. Will they try and re-engage? Kuzan can jump over this curve. Hey, okay, there we go. Depth charge, Faker's knocked up, straight into a hook. Captain Jack with a lot of autos, and Faker will die on this rise. The fight over Dragon continues. Both top laners have TP if this fight continues. Don't face check. The Tristano has to walk away. So should be able to clear out this pink wall. The chip damage onto Bang is immense from Kuzan. Even though he's not in Abyssal Scepter range, he's taking so much damage. And he doesn't have that sustain yet. Just the Doran's Blade to get it back. So Jin Air takes position on the Dragon. They're going to take number two here in what is turning out to be an extremely close game. What we were hoping for from game one before, before Faker decided to play basketball with his own ball. Now, you know, I've seen this before, Papa Smithy. Can I see the replay? This was oh, Flash. Nice spell shield. And Ghost use, but spell shield mechanics is something that Captain Jack was always well known for. And the moment that the dredge line registered, you knew this was going to be a definite kill for Jinair with no summoners on Faker. Yeah, just the constant CC from Nautilus. Easy lockdown onto Rise. So, I've seen this before, Papa Smithy. I've seen close games with SKT. Mm -hmm. I saw KT play one in their first match earlier this week. But then SKT comes out, they win one team fight, they take Baron, and the game is over. So, and there's always that chance. It's those teams that are assertive around taking Barons. EDG, of course, were famous for this both last season and towards the start of this season. SKT have been excellent in parlaying any sort of pick, sometimes only one pick onto the jungler, into a Baron at 23 to 26 minutes. That risk always exists, but the item timings from Jin are good. Specifically Kuzan, we wondered, how would he perform in a high pressured environment after watching one of his fellow mid lane rookies in Edge really suffer in Series 1? 4, 1, and 3, certainly not overawed in mid. Yeah, well, Bengi gonna find Chaser here as some deep wards are placed by Jinair. They can't clear the pink though. Trace playing very far back, trying to get that farm up. He's had a rough time this game. Has had to go just for a full magic pen build because of Marin's early cowl, which actually, that early cowl has turned around a lot with Chaser and Rumble on the Gragas or the Gragas and Rumble tag teaming on these ganks. And now we see this again. Teleport's coming in actually behind. No, canceled by the Maokai. Okay, that's teleport canceled by both top lanes. Yeah, good reaction though. Trying to fall back to that turret. So the pressure will continue. This is Jin Air's chance to shine. They need a larger gold lead to combat SK Telecom in the late game, that is for sure. The efficiency of the voice up is actually looking wonderful given that Locket 
multiple magic resist. I believe it's both a Negatron cloak on Faker and yep. magic resist stacking on Marin's actually a very good item. Bengi's caught wow. trying to do some sort of Flash. flank. And he's overheated that Agony's Embrace has to be used. That is a key engage tool missing now from SKT. Yeah, Bang tried to walk up and use the ultimate to maybe save the Agony's Embrace. Okay, the Sun Turret runs out. Crucial that Equalizer is still available for Jyn Air. I wish we had seen this Jyn Air last game, Papa Smithy. The one that we know is measured, has good shot calling, that doesn't have to rely on these wacky picks because when we see them play meta, they're so good. Chase's champion pool, I guess, is the only thing to consider. He uh, needed to pick an early pressure jungler, didn't want to go for the Lee Sin that seemed to be begging, went for the Rengar and just all went sideways from there. Marin's really scrapping aggressively. This is prime area for an equalizer. And Marin just doesn't have the armor yet to make those kind of plays onto Captain Jack. But why? They're, they're fighting in prime equalizer territory. They know that cooldown's up. Do they really need to be scrapping for the red buff in what is a close-knit game. Yeah, absolutely not, especially when they didn't have the vision there. Uh, che was the one who actually managed to get the red buff in the end, but that denial, definitely not worth it. They're going to lose a tier two. 100%, Che. You can just walk up and tank it. Of course, the turret damage is good, if a bit risky, from 500 range from Captain Jack. Can't also turn this into another objective, but certainly in the ascendancy in game two, even at 24 minutes, are Jyn Air Green. Yeah. They, they have that edge for the moment. They're playing well in the lanes. SK Telecom needs to find a way back into this game. They got some nice shutdown on the Trace in the top lane, but because he's on that rumble, he still remains relevant even with very few items and the fact that he's fallen behind in farm. The power spikes are about to hit for Rise. He just hits 10 stack water of ages. Actually, Seraphs completes as well, so 24 minutes suddenly gains a massive burst of power, both in terms of durability and just damage with the uh, AP scaling from the Rod of Ages. Yeah, and his counterpart, Kuzon, still working on the pieces of the death cap here. Not opting into a Zonia, so maybe less Azir Sec players, but certainly going to be doing crazy damage. And we've already seen a couple of Sand Soldier autos to bang, and he's zoned out of a fight. Bang's Tristana has not been quite as impressive as I had hoped it would be in terms of providing pressure on the map. I've got to say, Tristana as a pick, up there with Echo, and on paper offering so much, you can even see as an analyst the win conditions where it would do so well. But when it comes to actually translating into champions' victories, few and far between. Yeah, it's not been particularly effective in practice as we would have thought in theory, that is true. Okay, so SKT uh -oh. gonna, oh, goodbye, Trace. It's a pick and it's 26 minutes. Will they try and take the Baron? Because there's still a lot of power left and the teleport available for Trace in 30 seconds. I, I don't think so. I think you just are happy with the advantage you got right there. The fact that you have delayed so much in this game, you probably haven't delayed that dragon right now, but maybe you can pick up a TP for it, and you're going to be able to push the side waves back out and put more pressure onto Jin Air. So, very important kill there. Trace face checking and SKT sitting in that vision hole right in front of that Baron, making use of the surprise gank from the Black Faker goes back. He's going to upgrade the distortion enchantment next. Ghost Flash going to be available that much more often. Crucially, doesn't have his Flash for another four minutes, so he's going to be catchable, but with all his durability implied and otherwise with both his passive and his Seraph's Embrace, still massively powerful. So, blue buff right before the fight for Faker. Unless it gets stolen away, which it will not. Faker using that shield to tank out the damage. Be the Grab to Jyn Air. Will be the third dragon if they could pick it up. We're waiting for Marin to go for his home guard teleport. Does he have a suitable ward? He does, just behind Trace. They see it coming in, though. Jyn Air disengages. They turn on to Marin immediately. There is a whole horde of Sand Soldiers. Wolf with the secondary engage. Marin goes down, though. Now we see a lot of damage going on to Wolf. However, Bengi sneaks in and takes the dragon. Will this cost them a Baron, though? Jyn Air turns on to that objective next. That's definitely the most straightforward objective for them to pick up. Remember, there's a lot of damage still available, and, of course, the Agony's Embrace. Pink Ward being cleared or not cleared. No, is cleared. Changes aggro between the two. 
This is risky. Marin doesn't have Telebox, so it will be a true 3v5. It would be. There's Bengi, gets chunked out by the Sand Soldiers. Deftly moved there by Kuzan. Kuzan, Trace comes through. Bengi has to retreat. That's going to be enough. Faker's going to have to be a hero here if he wants to stop this, and he decides, I might as well be a hero another time. <laughs> so SKT made the smart move to just rush down the Dragon, knowing that they would pay for it with a single kill, but the second kill opened up an easy Baron attempt from Jin Air. Smart move from Trace using the Flash to completely chase away Evelyn, who was only in Flash Smite, then die in the AoE range. Bang pushes down a, t a outer turret, but the Baron buff could be what is required for Jin Air to finally break the base. Yeah, you, you have to believe that that is likely going to be true. Bang with the static shift now, so he has more wave clear, and SKT broke up Played nice defense, got the waves all pushing at their side after deciding not to commit to that Baron. So it's going to be a while before Jin Air can actually pressure any kind of inhibitor turret here. They bought themselves a bit of a br some breathing room, but that is it. Sweeper comes through. They spot Faker, who is just looking for a cheeky pick at someone trying to push up the side wave solo. Maybe just the outer turret's going to be the safer objective. Breaking the base is definitely what you want to do during the three-minute duration of Baron. But for now, with the side minion wave so out of whack, very difficult to pull up. Faker actually taking the gromp right there from over the wall. And now Jin Air, they have the bottom minion wave in prime position. They're moving forward. They want to take the remaining tier twos. And we get one for free. No possible defense there from SK Telecom unless they wanted to seriously invest in an engage. I mean, you mess up an engage, one or two members die, you at minimum lose your inhibitor, so it's not worth it. The risk reward certainly isn't there. You need to opt into smart decisions. That has been SKT's playbook this whole season, is making the informed decision wherever possible. So here you go, Che getting the necessary wards down to make sure they know who is going to be behind that turret and that they can threaten anyone who wants to defend. SKT pushing aggressively into mid, completely out of position. Uh, Jin Air, when it comes to respond to this push, they're actually not really achieving much of anything, wow. and Bang's getting free time. This is what Tristana does best. This is the reason that teams are experimenting with the pick, but here's the engage. Now they're all in a choke, though. Faker's there. Faker gets knocked around with the explosive cast. Equalizer goes down, but here comes Faker. He's on to Chaser by himself. How much damage can he get done? Marin trapped behind the the uh, Azir ultimate. Bengi still on the run. Bengi trying to escape. Chaser going to finish him off with the body slam and an auto attack. And opting into a choke sounds bad against the AoE damage Rise can put out, but it's so much worse against Trace, who literally goes equalizer-centric with the small amount of gold he's able to pick up. It's going to be an inhibitor turret threatened, but 20-second death timers for SKT. Yeah, still very early in this game for Baron breaking the base. Off. And no more Baron buff, but that said, no wave clear either from SKT that they don't have to walk up very close to a dangerous Jin Air Green Wings. An inhibitor will be the prize that Jin Air earns from that last fight. And backing away, just look at the wonderful vision Jin Air's been able to put around this blue side ever since, what, 15 minutes into the game. They have littered SKT's map with wards. Now they've even extended it to the red side jungle. There's few and far between flank wards open for Marin, and his teleport doesn't cool down for another 30 seconds. Yeah, speaking of those flank wards too, that's that's been a strength of Jin Air is clearing those or at least having pinks so that Evelyn can't engage upon them. If we look at the way Jin Air plays, they play very well in kiting. They play very good vision around their sides when they want to push up and look at the number of wards, like you're saying, that are down on the map already. Jin Air, always a team that's been comfortable in sieges was most impressed by Jin Air's play against CJ Entis, where with a poke comp that, of course, was the Nidalee comp, they were running four uh, warding totems and just warding every single crevice on the map. Opens up is easy objective taking because you have so much advanced information. And this is the Captain Jack special. Never really opts into the scrying or improved warding totem has been his way. Well, I think that that's actually more valuable in this situation when you're worried about those flanks from Marin and from Bengi and you are confident in your ability to kite them out, which you should be, because if you don't have that engage, 
Faker is going to have a really hard time getting onto you to deal the damage, so you don't necessarily need that. And also, you know, we've discussed this before, but since SK Telecom only has one lens and it isn't upgraded, how are they sweeping out the sheer volume of wards with double sight stone and three totems, upgraded totems, that Jinir is going to be able to place. You you can't get rid of all the wards. You just can't. Yeah, everyone that doesn't opt into a sight stone just picks up an effective sight stone with the great awarding totem. Faker almost gets picked. They try to come back onto Che, but a big fight is brewing. Yeah, Che gets picked for free right there. Marin, he's trying to clean this one up. Captain Jack dealing with damage he can, but it's not a whole lot to Maokai at this stage. Dragon is live. They want to poke. They want to get these sand soldiers forward, but SKT gets a very important fight. And there's the Agonizia's Embrace. They may have gone too far. Bengi trying to clean up. Faker on the outside. Gets a room prison on Drace. Equalizer's drop, but it's not doing much. Faker's just going to be able to clean this up. Faker is getting a huge AoE. Faker is going to get a triple kill as they turn it around. A perfect ace for SK Telecom. And now they're going just to chew through these turrets. Can they win the game with this Tristana? They're pushing against the super minions, but it might not matter. The Tristana does so much turret damage. Remember, explosive shot lowers the cooldown of the rapid fire, and then some 20 seconds on these death timers, and only Che to protect. And here we go. Che's going to do his best to keep them off the towers, but it's not much. They have the minion wave. This is going to be a win. All of a sudden, for SK Telecom, there is nothing that they can do as Bengi kills Che. Four seconds left. Three, two, one. It is not enough. That is it. SK Telecom 2-0. What a comeback. SK Telecom pickpocket a win that Jin Air had right in front of their noses. Disgusting if you're a Jin Air fan. They had everything going for them. One pick onto Che, a little bit too aggressive with their positioning, and Faker wiped them to the floor. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Uh, SK Telecom goes undefeated in terms of best of threes. That is number 16 in a row. Back to back round robins from the second in spring to the first now. A tough loss for Jin Air. You can see they hung in there so long, they had the advantage. But SKT, a team that is so decisive, you make that one mistake, you go down that one time, and SKT punishes to the maximum possible degree. And the only teams to take away a win from SKT are teams that we don't even expect to be competing in the playoffs. It's only Anarchy and Samsung. SKT sweeping all the predictions.